I think the biggest thing is just having more tools available to you. So mm -hmm. I've been doing this model since 2012. The ability to offer multiple options to a homeowner. I mean, we've heard this before. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When I approach a homeowner, I can go in there and dive deep into Trevor's world because I can figure out what's important to Trevor. Yep. And then once I understand what's important to Trevor, now I can prescribe like a doctor the best solution for you. What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Carrot Cast podcast, the podcast with a funny name, but a big mission. We help thousands of real estate investors and agents grow rock solid mindsets, do better marketing so that you can build a business of freedom and impact. I'm your host, Trevor Mock. Let's dive into today's episode. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Guys, I've got an, a continuation on an amazing, amazing series that we're doing that's kind of like demanded by you all, demanded by you all on the Carrot Cast community uh, of how do we close more leads into deals. And especially right now in an environment as of the time I'm recording this, where uh, there is a lot of competition between agents, investors, hybrids. You have iBuyers in the middle now as well. But then also, uh, it is a seller's market. And so there might not be as much inventory in some parts. So we've got to be doing better with the leads that we have. And I told a little quick story um, in a previous episode, the one with John Martinez, about the deals I'm closing right now in Louisville. And I just got a text literally 10 minutes ago on one, we're going to close a $20,000 wholesale deal in Birmingham. And the big difference that we're, uh, that I'm seeing is the people I'm working with close their leads at such a high rate that we don't have to get 40 leads a month. You know, we've got seven leads that came in this past three weeks in Louisville. We have three contracts and one of them is a $60,000 profit. So like legit stuff. So we're going to continue to show you guys how you can have a better business, uh, get off of that hamster wheel. So you don't have to sift through 80, 90 leads to get the deal. How do you sift through five, 10, 15 leads wow. by serving those leads wet better, negotiating better. And I couldn't uh, imagine a better guy to come on uh, this series with us and Mr. Steve Trang, who I'll reintroduce you to here in a second. But Steve and I had a chance to meet personally uh, for 30 minutes or so at a, at a Starbucks in Phoenix about a year, year and a half ago. And I've always just heard so many amazing things about you, Steve. And it just, uh, I think even since then, uh, it's just amplified seeing what you're doing in real estate disruptors and hearing from everybody else. So welcome back onto the Carrot Cast, man. Thank you for having me. It's, it's my honor, right? I mean, just being able to hang out with you, I think uh, just same same as you hearing, uh, I hear so much, so many good things about you. I've never heard anyone say all oh, that, Trevor. Right? It's always a very positive light. And I love connecting with people that have the same positive energy. Dude, I, I appreciate it big time. So we're, we're going to link up uh, the other episode that we did with you. But also, uh, why don't we give 60 seconds for people who don't know who Steve Trang is? Uh, who are you? What do you do? Um, and uh, kind of where can people find you? And then we'll dig sure. in negotiation. Uh, so high level, I've been in business uh, since May of 2007. So mm -hmm. cut my teeth at the right time. <laughs> if I wanted to get experience, that was the right time to get a lot of experience. <laughs> um, started podcast three years ago. Um this month and then as of recent uh, i've just been training people on sales and negotiation really hard for the last two years as a matter of fact for the last year i've been training within collective genius and i've yeah. you know been very fortunate to work with uh 50 plus of the best home buyers in the country and, and working with their team so i was already fascinated by sales and now that i'm training some of the best uh, uh, in the country they're also challenging me to be the mm. best version of myself which is Man, they're, they're really pushing me and challenging me, but I love it. I relish that challenge. I like it, man. And one thing we were talking about right before we hit record too, is you have a real estate brokerage there in Phoenix. You are mm -hmm. a wholesaler. Are you flipping houses too? Kind of like what, what's the business look like? Uh, so we probably, I would say uh, we wholesale more than flip. Uh, we flip reluctantly. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we flip reluctantly is because we flip the houses that we can't wholesale. So we close 100% mm -hmm. of our deals. We don't do this thing where we contract it and then we cancel yep. or ask for price reduction. Like we contract 100%. So our preferred exit is wholesaling. And if we can't wholesale it, now we're flipping it reluctantly. And so everyone's margins on flips are way higher than our margins on their wholesale. Our mm -hmm. wholesales and our our wholesale margins are higher than our <laughs> flip margins because oh, those really? are the ones that we bought poorly <laughs> gotcha. that we're stuck with. I got you, man. I, I love it. So anyone who's an agent specifically, you're going to really learn a lot of, uh, from this, but also investors, wholesalers, flippers. Uh, it's going to be up everyone's wheelhouse here because Steve's got the experience on all sides of that. And so we'll kind of talk about how how do we present those offers? How do we um, talk to sellers? 
uh, given, you know, we call it hybrid here at Carrot Steve, but uh, given that you're a hybrid. And so we'll, we'll dig into that here in a bit. But uh, one one of the big things that that did pop up to me is I know I've heard over the years, I don't think you and I have talked about it specifically, unless it was on the previous podcast we did. But uh, you you aren't like a natural born, born salesperson, you didn't pop mm-hmm. out of the womb being, oh my gosh, I want to go out there and close. And no. so um, that's gonna be a cool part of this that that what you do teach and are going to show on this on this uh, episode here is something that anybody can learn no matter your personality type but you do have to make a mindset shift so let me talk let's talk on that for a couple minutes what was the big mindset shift you had to make steve uh to go from uh where you were to where you are uh, mentally to be able to be a, a good negotiator and closer yeah so what certainly didn't help was having a background in engineering mm-hmm. right growing up with that engineering mindset um, so the way we sell is the way we would want to buy. Mm. And the way I would want to buy is educate me, give me all the information and then get out of the way. I'll make the best decision for myself. Mm. Yep. And so that's how I sold. Mm. And that is not a very effective sales <laughs> process. And on top of that, um, I was very understanding not just empathetic, but sympathetic. I could put myself in their position when they said they needed to think about it Mm. because of course you need to think about it. I would want to think about it. Mm. And again, we, we sell the way we want to buy. And so if someone told me that I was totally understanding of it Mm. and that was crushing me and I could not figure out a way ethically, morally to push past that. And so it wasn't until I really kicked out on sales in the last few years and really understanding, you know, getting better at sales, understanding it's not an art. Mm. It's not, I mean, there are people that have it naturally, but it's a learned skill. Some people have it naturally. Mm. Like we talked about our friend Pace Morby, right? He's just a natural sales guy. He's like, you know, Mariah Carey, but for the rest of us, there's an actual process, there's an actual system that you can learn and apply and become a world-class salesperson mm. by doing it correctly. I like it. I like it. Well, dude, I'm, I'm crazy excited to dive into that. So before we kind of dive into the sales part of things, um, I want to toss a question your way. So let's say you weren't working this next week. I, I always want to get behind the, the brain of, of what really fires people up. Where would you spend your time if you're not working this next week that gives you the most energy and fires you up? No work I, at all. I would probably find my way back to work. <laughs> um the i mean the things that, that i love um basketball getting yeah. kind of old right so 41 so can't play as much basketball yeah poker still kind of complicated with the COVID thing <laughs> um uh kung fu yeah which is kind of hard to do when there's not a lot of people out there uh-huh. so i'll probably <laughs> find myself back at work but truly you know I put in, I don't work crazy hours. Mm. You know, I work 45 hours a week, but when I'm working, like I am at play, I love what I do. And it's this constant challenge. How do I make everything world-class level? I mean, there's got, I got multiple endeavors and I'm trying to make them all world-class. And that, that challenge is insatiable. I could do it all day. Dude. I love it. That, that's that's a great answer, man. You, you enjoy your work. Give, it gives you energy, which yeah, which I like. Well, so I get to work. I get to operate in the unique ability zone, right? If you if you follow us, you teach a coach. Yep. I get to live my unique ability zone forty hours a week. Dude, did you did you do strategic coach? I did go through strategic yeah. coach. Yep. I I did that in twenty twelve. Um, game changer for me. You know, flew to oh. Chicago once a quarter, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It was the third session. The third session the things clicked for me with unique ability mm-hmm. and like, it was the energy thing. And I've talked yep. about this on the podcast before. This is a little departure y'all it's valuable for you, but it's the, the energy thing. Cause I, I'd heard the unique ability phrase forever. I read the book, you know, from him, from Dan, uh, Dan, uh, Dan Sullivan. So they got the wrote who, not how, for those guys are really excited about it now. Yeah. No, we got I got to learn from that guy years ago. Dude, I haven't read that one yet. I, I need to dig into that. But in, in the book, it all made sense. But I couldn't, I couldn't like peg my unique abilities. And um, the gal, the coach that day, she said, you'll know, you'll know the things when they give you more energy when you're done doing them than when you started. And I started to write a list of those. I'm like, and that's what started my process. I call the energy audit, which has mm-hmm. changed my life. But uh, dude, that's cool that, uh, that we have that shared. Yeah. There. Awesome. Dude, so we're, we're going to dive into sales here. 
And uh, I, I want to first start with the hybrid agent part of it because um, not everybody in this series has that agent element to it, but we're pounding that drum big time. We have been for two or three years. And now, now with inventories being low, agents are coming going, Oh my gosh, now we finally realize and recognize, you know, what, what you're trying to do and why, yeah. why they need uh, what we're all doing. So what, what is the competitive edge that you see uh, for yourself and your business when you have both of those sides of the business? I think the biggest thing is just having more tools available to you. So mm -hmm. I've been doing this model since 2012. Yep. Um, and the ability to offer multiple options to a homeowner. I mean, we've heard this before. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. And so when I approach a homeowner, um, I still have their best interest at heart. I was talking about the whole thing about the conflict of interest. Like, there's no conflict. Yep. I can go in there and dive deep into Trevor's world and figure out what's going on. What's the, what's the crux of your problem, what you need help with. And depending if you just want the most amount of money, I can pivot to a listing presentation, mm. or if you want to be out of here in 10 days, I can make you a cash offer. Mm. But what I can do, which is most important is I can figure out what's important to Trevor. Yep. And then once I understand what's important to Trevor, now I can prescribe like a doctor, the best solution for you. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the ability to offer you a listing, then I got to keep pushing hard on the cash offer. Yep. Now this is adversarial. This isn't me doing what's best for Trevor. This is me pushing uh, a cash offer, which is like, I don't know if that makes sense for me. Yep. Um, and the other thing too, is being an agent, um, A, I do have a regulatory board that monitors me, which we're probably going to have in all 50 states sometime in the next few years. Yeah, yeah. But I do have a regulatory board that I have to report to uh, and so I think that gives homeowners some level of comfort, not the highest, mm -hmm. but some. Um, and then the last thing is if what I get a lead right on my site and it's in Connecticut, I can't, oh, I can call another Connecticut wholesaler, mm -hmm. but there is no enforcing me getting paid on that deal. Yep. yep. But I can go on Zillow, find a Connecticut, find someone in Hartford, gotcha. find the best three realtors. Like, Hey, I got a motivated seller. Will you pay a referral fee mm. and now i can get paid legally yeah because being a licensed realtor you can get paid legal referral fees but otherwise getting paid how do you enforce it is it legal it's like you can't call the police on your drug dealer mm -hmm. yep and so yep. it's like <laughs> they could say hey that other wholesaler <laughs> didn't pay me a referral fee like but they're not <laughs> legally bound to they're not legally yeah. allowed to gotcha yeah that, that makes sense Dude, so so you mentioned approaching the seller, um, and so let's say the lead comes in, and you're uh, going to go. You're showing up to the house. Mm -hmm. How how do you show up to that house as the hybrid agent investor? Are you showing up with your brokerage logo, with the investment logo? Is it one and the same? And then uh, at what point in the combo do they do they know that you have multiple options, or does that even come up really? Uh, they don't know okay. necessarily. So what I would do is first thing we gotta do is gotta establish the rules. Mm -hmm. And so establishing the rules is, you know, hey, Trevor, can I share with you how these meetings normally go? Um, thank you for inviting me to your home. Typically these, what they wanna know, blah, blah, blah. And then I was, I'll ask them, you know, Trevor, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? And we'll talk. As we're talking, we're gonna figure out what's going on in your world. Yep. And after about 25 minutes to an hour, I'm gonna have a pretty good idea what's going on in your world what your motivation is, what the problem looks like, what the solution looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to label, right? That's what Chris Voss says. Yep. Hey, Trevor, you know, given the conversation we've had so far, it sounds to me like you're trying to get the most amount of money for your home. Okay. And you're going to say, obviously, who doesn't want to get the most amount of money for home? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure, can I show you how we do that? Okay. And that's gotcha. a pivot. Yep. But they don't know about these other options. Or I might say, you know, given the conversation we had so far, it sounds like you're trying to have this wrapped up in the next 10 to 14 days mm -hmm. to which the answer is probably gonna be like, obviously, weren't you listening? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I show you how we do that? And then we go pivot to a cash offer. But the point is I'm listening yep. to what's important to you. And then again, prescribing like a doctor would, you know, if you want to go to a chiropractor and after five minutes, the guy says, here's your problem. We're going to, we're, we're actually going to operate. Mm. Right. And I need your credit card for $5,000. Yeah. 
because this happens. Yep. <laughs> You're kind of wondering, does this guy really have my best interest at heart? Yeah. Because yeah. he's prescribing without any questions, right? Whereas you go to a, 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 a orthopedic surgeon mm. and he does like a 25 minute, 30 minute Q&A, sends you off to get an MRI, get an x-ray, this and that. And you reconvene a week later after you got your MRI, he's reviewing the results. Yeah. And he says, hey, it seems like you've got this, you know, sciatic nerve or your vertebrae, this or that. It looks like we're probably going to have to operate. You're going to listen to that guy. Yep. hundred percent. So it's a completely, it's not a completely different approach. It's just, it's a process where we're trying to get pay like doctors. We need to behave like doctors. Mm. Dude. So that, that, that's really, really awesome. And, and one thing I want to kind of dig into a little bit deeper on that is a very common thing that I'll see come up. And, you know, John uh, Martinez mentioned it a while ago as well. I'm pulling out of my brain bank is people serve up offers on one piece of paper, right? It's like, Hey, mm-hmm. cool. Da, 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 da. Here's, here's my four options or my three options. You know, which one do you want? Um, why, why is it, why is that, that that does not work, um, as well as taking this route and asking questions and prescribing? It could totally work. Right? I'm not saying it wouldn't work. Yep. A lot of things work. Uh, it's just, our approach is more about getting, um, a, a we call it professional rapport yep. with the, with the homeowner. And really I want them in the middle of this conversation to feel like, man, Steve understands me better than anybody else. As a matter of fact, I've heard those words at an appointment. Yeah. I said, do you feel like I understand what's going on in your world? The response was, I feel like you understand me better than anyone I've ever, mm. I, I know. Yeah. So if I understand you and your world to that detail, you're more likely to, gonna, to go with my recommendations. Mm. Yeah, and my I recommendations like are what's, what I believe is best for you, right? It's yeah. not like I'm pushing one thing. It's like, I think this is probably the best thing for you. And I can offer it. I love it. Because I wear two hats. I love it, dude. So let, let me, let me kind of dive in now. So once again, you, you were mentioning before that you're not that natural born, uh, sales, you know, salesman, the natural born negotiator, mm-hmm. uh, what, what kind of demeanor or how do you step into that meeting to where you feel confident in your abilities and confident in, in the way that you're talking, uh, versus maybe how you were doing it before. Cause there's, uh, there, there's, uh, you're on the Wolf Wall Street's podcast not too long ago, right? So you, yeah. you and him are definitely, uh, probably both very good, but very different. Yes. And so how, how would you say that your demeanor is different and um, how would you suggest others who are similar to you and me, I, I'm mm-hmm. very similar to you, uh, successfully do sales really well? So, our, you know, my demeanor approach really didn't change a whole lot except for two things. And these, I mean, these are major things. Uh, but as far as the way I presented myself, the way I carried myself, a lot of it was already there. So there's a lot of things I was really doing really well that I had no idea was good, yeah. which was asking questions and listening, mm. right? I was already doing that at a pretty good level, not mirroring, but, li- but listening. Yeah. The things that made the biggest difference for me was when we started establishing the rules, which was, you know, Trevor, you know, by the end of our meeting, it's gonna be yes, it's gonna be no, either way is fine. Yeah, you know, true. if you want to tell me, like, if the price doesn't work for you, would you feel comfortable telling me no? Yeah. Uh, if I'm not going to buy your house, are you going to be okay if I tell you that, which is positioning? Mm-hmm. And if it does make sense for us to work together, what that means is we're going to take everything we talked about today and we're going to put that in writing. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. And so what we're doing here is we're establishing the rules at the very beginning of the meeting. Yeah. And now me being a high S on the disc, I was very understanding of, I need to think about it initially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for me, we have a process and you and I agree in the very beginning that mm-hmm. it's going to be a yes or a no. Now, when we get to the very end, he's like, I need to think about it. I was like, no, that's against the rules. And gotcha. whatever, this is me playing mind games on myself, tricking myself. But we agreed on a set of rules at the very beginning of the appointment. Yeah. I can no longer tolerate I need to think about it because mm-hmm. you and I agreed on rules. You can't Dude, so how, change how, the rules how in the middle you, of the game. How, how do you do you present it that way to sellers? Like, hey, we agreed in these ru- rules, or what, what do you what do you say verbally? I would, I would say, hey, Trevor, I guess I don't really understand. Okay. You know, when we talked about the beginning, you said that we were going to, there's going to be yes. If you didn't like the price, you're going to say yes. Uh, but if you didn't like the price or you're uncomfortable with me, you're going to tell me no. Yep. Did something change? Mm, mm, and okay. if they want to keep pushing it, then we, you know, we do the uh, objection violation. We say, hey, Trevor, you know, you, you got to think about it some more. Got it. Is it the process you need to think about? It's like, no, it's not the process. Okay. So it's got to be the price. I mean, just uncomfortable with the price. Just tell me you're uncomfortable with the price. And they say, no, it's not the price. Then I do, you know, I go real sad puppy. It's like, 
I get it. Mm. It's me. You're, you're uncomfortable with me. Gotcha. And then they'll, at this point, they should be jumping out of there. So he's like, it's not you. And they'll tell you what it really is. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Dude, that, that's so good, man. And this is one of the big things I've seen that separates really great, um, you know, salespeople, coaches as leaders is having that kind of repertoire where you always know what the next question is or how you're going to dig deeper on it. Um, you know, it's something I've been going through a lot lately as a leader to figure out, well, how do I coach my people better? And what's that set of questions? So do you, do you kind of have that, that process in your mind when you walk into the door going, okay, here's these 10 steps I'm going to go through. Mm -hmm. And here, if they say this, I'm going to do this. Do you, do you already have that in your mind or is it really fluid for you right now? Uh, it's pretty fluid, but we do have a roadmap. Okay. And as a matter of fact, um, I sent it to your team uh, beforehand. Yeah. And so we have, it's like, I want to say it's two and a half pages. Like if you get through all if in a perfect scenario, you go through all these questions and if you hit all these questions the right way. You should walk out at least 60%, at least of the, con of the appointments with the contracts. Mm, that's crazy. Right. Because you're doing everything the right way. It's all psychological. You know, all, yeah. everything we do is done with purpose. Nothing's mm -hmm. done by accident. And, yeah. um, you know, we got the script, which is the ideal scenario. Uh, but the fact is we got a lot of reps, mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities. We've been battle tested because we read all the books. We've read not all of them, but a good number of them. Yep. We've gone through the trainings. And we've taken it and we've applied it, which I think is key, you know, for a lot of people because they'll learn and not apply. We've taken what we learned, we apply it's like, well, that didn't work. Throw mm -hmm. that out. It's like, well, let's, you know, what, what else might work? So we take another idea and we'll apply it. It's like, wow, that worked really well. Mm -hmm. And so all of our sales training is based off of what we know works. Gotcha. And we it's battle tested in Phoenix, which is the competitive market. It's a tough market. So yeah. dude, uh, uh, guys, Steve mentioned this resource that he has that he sent to our team. So what we're doing during this series is we have a whole bunch of amazing uh, resources for you on negotiation and sales. Just go to carrot.com forward slash close, C-L-O-S-E, carrot.com forward slash close. And you're going to get uh, Steve's perfect seller appointment scoring system, which is a comprehensive guide, y'all, uh, to ch uh, on what to say. And he usually sells it for hundred bucks. So you guys are going to get that for free just by going to carrot.com forward slash close. And there's going to be the other recordings and other resources there too. And dude, Steve, what, what I want to do right now is give kind of people a handful of things that they can walk through mm -hmm. and start to say, and then they can go get the rest of it over at carrot.com for slash close yep. for free. So let's let's kind of pick a couple scenarios where if you're if you're going to give this to a new team member of yours and they're going to go mm -hmm. out there and and start to, to execute it, where are the one or two biggest points where uh, they're likely going to have troubles or fall off on the negotiation process? And then what yeah. do we say uh, to then get them back on? So um well if someone's getting off track, the best thing to do is just ask for a minute. Okay. So let's say like Trevor just keeps rambling, rambling, rambling. Yeah. And I say, you know what? Hang on a second. I'm still writing this down. Can you just bear with me. And you, you know, you got the pen and you write it down. Yep. And then you're going to stop talking because I'm writing things down. Mm. And then once I'm done writing, I'm going to ask the next question and I've okay. taken control back of the conversation. Gotcha. Cool. Um, but as far as having a clear picture of the roadmap is really important. Um, but I would say the parts of the roadmap, we, we talked about establishing the rules. Mm -hmm. The other part that we talk about is pain, asking questions like a doctor. Okay. Um, and then the, the other thing that I think is crucial as well that people I've seen kind of screw up with, is with the clothes. Mm -hmm. And the clothes can make you sound kind of pushy. You know, like let's say you're at 200,000. I say, well, if I can give you 180,000, will you sign today? Yep. And that kind of sounds, it's not quite what will it take for you to buy this car today, but it's kind of close. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so what we say is, you know, if I can give you 180,000, Trevor, what will happen next? Gotcha. Okay. And then you're going to tell me if you're ready to, to, mm. to close or not. And as a matter of fact, we actually had, we put it on Instagram a couple of days ago. We had the seller, like, if you'll give me 200,000, I'll sign right now. Right. Like they're closing us. Yep. And our, our maximum allowable offer was 220. Okay. You know, yep. but they're closing us. Like, yeah. we're like, well, I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, and they're pushing us. So I would say the other thing that we would add is again, the part where people kind of get stuck is the, is the close. Mm. And so I'll share with you how we close. Perfect. So I say, Hey, you know, Trevor, remember the beginning of our appointment? Uh, we talked about, you know, if my price didn't work for you. If you just weren't comfortable with me, you were going to tell me, no, mm -hmm. do you remember that? Yep. Perfect. Sure. And if it did make sense for us to work together, what that meant was we're going to take everything you talked about. We we're going to put it in writing. Are we still on the same page? hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Trevor, given the questions and answers that we've shared so far, do you feel like I understand what's going on in your world? Yeah. You, you, you do better than I do now. 
All right. Perfect. I appreciate that. And do you believe that I can help you? I, I do. It sounds like you're a good guy and, and you obviously know what you're talking about. Thank you for that. So what would you like me to do next? Well, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to get rid of this house. So what, what, what do numbers look like and, and what do the terms look like? Well, you know, you were telling me you were looking for an offer between 130, 135,000. Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. Yeah. So we can do that. That's something you'd be comfortable with. If, if, if we could do the 135, then yeah, we could, we could do something there. Okay. I don't suppose you want me to put that in writing. Uh, it, it'd probably be better for all of us if it was in writing. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Only if you're comfortable. Okay. Yes, definitely. And that's, that's the close. Gotcha. Dude, that's, that's good, man. Yeah. So, so is, there's no like pushing there's this and along mm -hmm. the way before we got here, right? Like we already mm -hmm. talked about price. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing I want to emphasize too, is we never talk about our price. Okay. This whole time you never know my price because there's three different um phases i think from when you first have their phone number until you actually sign the contract okay there's the first phase which is like i call it stranger danger you know it's like who are you mm. you know if they fill out a paper click you know they fill out a carrot set and you call them they're like they don't really know for sure that you call from paper click right yeah or direct mail or you cold call is this like who are you why are you bothering me why should i talk to you why should i trust you that's like the first phase yeah and eventually you crack that and then you're going to get into this rapport and this is where we can have a cordial, mostly cordial, mostly respectful, sometimes mm -hmm. a little tough, yeah. but generally a cordial, respectful conversation. And we have this whole conversation until we get the price. Mm. And once you know my price, I have become commoditized. Mm, gotcha. Yep. So yep. we do everything in our power to hold on to that price. That's our only bit of leverage. And I will never share my price with you mm. until you have a pen or a mouse in your hand. Mm. If you don't have a pen or a mouse in your hand, I am not giving you my number. I'll dance around it. I'll tell you what other people are paying. I'll say, I might be able to do that. You know, let me talk to my boss, whatever. Yeah. But I will never tell you my number until you said the words, I'm ready to sign. I want to sign. I want to sign the contract, whatever. Until I hear those words, mm. you will not hear my number. Dude, so this this is so good, man. I the, the first like real sales experience that I had, not me selling, but me getting sold, mm -hmm. was it was right out of high school, and I was going around to to test drive some trucks, and uh, I was alone. I was probably eighteen or nineteen. I literally I wasn't looking to buy anything that day, but I go into the car lot. I drove the truck, and I had no clue about sales, man. And the guy's talking to me. He does the normal thing of you know payments and what the payment would whatever. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to buy a truck and like, you know, I wasn't, wasn't walking out of there with a truck and he's writing all this crap down. He goes back there to, you know, his, his guy and he comes back with the thing and, and he turns it over to me and puts an X on the piece of paper and, and says, awesome. So you, you said, if you know, you're looking to get to $200 uh, a month in a, pay, a payment or whatever, and uh, you mentioned that that's what would be comfortable for you. If you just go ahead and sign right there, uh, that'll just kind of show. He said it in different words, but that'll 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 show that we're going to make this happen, and you're going to drive out out of here today with with the vehicle because uh, we we're able to meet your your goal there. I'm looking at it going ah, I, I I I clammed up. It felt like I was being forced. Now you were cornered. I was cornered, and and so I can totally relate to sellers who are who are getting that treatment from uh, from investors and, and agents, mm -hmm. where where you you talk numbers, and then you're like, all right, now I'm going to trap you into this. Like that's pretty yep. much what it is. You're trapping them into that, and I could totally see that person backing out and saying, I've got to talk to my husband or wife, or backing out and and something happening, and then or going dark, or going dark. There we go, because they're going right. to I mean, me in. they disappear two days after yep. close when titles trying to get hold and can't reach them, or two yep. days before. Two days after you sign the contract or two days before close, can't get a hold of them mm. because they went through this whole thing where they've experienced remorse because they felt closed. Dude, and that's exactly what I did. I didn't buy a truck that day, but I wouldn't answer anything that they ever sent me ever again. Like because right, they crushed our rapport. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, so we what, actually what? we actually had a lady almost force us out of her out of her home. Huh. Because she's like, You don't sound like an investor. And it doesn't sound like you even <laughs> want to buy my house. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we worked with her, but she was like, she was so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shell shocked. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, what is going on here? This is not, this is not how investors buy houses. 
And she was expecting the hard close and give me the number and I'm going to go take it to five different investors and shop around. Yep. Dude, so a, a couple of follow-up questions and we'll wrap this puppy. And I want people to go once again, carrot.com forward slash close because Steve has the entire checklist. He's like, he's grabbing out of some of, like he's grabbing some of this out of that checklist in that process. But if you guys want the whole thing, go to carrot.com forward slash close. It's normally sold for a hundred bucks. You're going to get that free and you're going to get John Martinez's six questions and his magic, uh, his magic message, I think it's called, and some other amazing resources from Pace Morby, all for free, guys. We want to open this up to you guys to the best that we know of. You know, we have 8,000 customers here at Carrot. This is the time we're recording this. And they're, they do hundreds of millions of dollars a year in revenue, maybe billions, I don't know, but at least hundreds of millions. And we said, we want to help you guys all succeed better. Who are the best two, three, four in the world at this? And you've got them right in front of you here. So go to carrot.com forward slash close and get the resource. But Steve, let's just say you're talking with the seller and you get to the end of, end of, the, end of the talk. And um, I, I'm sure you guys run into this situ situation where it seems like there's some sort of agreement on range of price at least, like, but then the person's just not willing to sign then. Uh, what, what do you do at that point? Yeah, so um, I guess Trevor, you know, it, it sounds like you're looking for an offer mm. that we might be able to reach, but it, my understanding is even if I give you your number right now, you're telling me you wouldn't even be able to commit today. No, I've, I've got to talk to my talk to my wife before I can. Okay, I mean, and she's probably too busy right now. There's no way you can get a hold of her. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, then what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm actually gonna to have to take off here. Mm. Um, can I share with you my biggest fear? Of course, definitely. So, yeah. you know, I had this other homeowner, and she had called me. You know, I, I met with her, and we had a good meeting. You know, we were comfortable in price, and she called me. She's like, "Hey, you know what? I had a chance to think about it." And you're my guy. I'm good to go with you. Mm. But I couldn't buy her house because uh, okay. I was out of money. Gotcha. Mm. Right. I mean, after this appointment, I've actually got two more tomorrow. Yep. And if you call me on a Saturday, I'm not saying for sure we can't buy your house, but there's a possibility we'll be out of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't want that. So what should we do? So would would i be able to call my wife and have her on the phone talk to us or does she need to be here physically i mean if you want to give her a call we can get her up to speed okay dude that that's good man so right right i, I like that i like it a lot that's good man what, what what i want everyone to do is is listen to what steve's saying here guys and that's the thing you're going to want to rewind this over and over again and hear that phrase, read that phrase, go to carrot.com forward slash close and get the free resources, get the checklist, get the questions, because uh, this isn't going to come natural the first time you do it, probably even the oh. second. So Steve, <laughs> it was I, beating our heads over and over again. It's like, well, what do we say here? Like, yeah. you know, we had to like brainstorm this and whiteboard this, all this out, all this out. Dude, dude, so how, how, how do you train someone on this? Um, how many times does it take? How many reps does it take for someone to uh, have it be, I'm not going to say fluid like you, cause you've got a gazillion reps near the guy, but uh, you weren't, you didn't, you weren't always the guy. I did not start this long, way now. Yeah. How long did it take you to get there? Man. Uh, when I first started geeking out on this, I want to say, and, and all praise to my team to support mm -hmm. me where I get to play all day and do whatever I want, whenever I want, yeah, like, yeah. all praise to them. So I got, I was going to sales training three times a week. Oh, wow. Right. It was two hours on Tuesdays, 90 minutes on Wednesdays, 90 minutes on Fridays. Mm. And I was in there absorbing, asking questions. What do we say about this situation? What do we say about that situation? Here's our cold call script. Yeah. How does this sound? We'll role play it. And he says, practice this and I'll use it on the sales trainer. Mm. And we'll go through this literally for years. And so when, when we talk, when you're asking like how, how long does someone have to take, it has to be a craft that you're passionate about. Yep. You know, it's not like, um, I mean, Stephen Curry, did he get his jump shot after a year? No way, man. No, no way. since he was, since he was walking, he was working on his jumper. Yeah. Right. So it's, it has to be something you're committed to. And I, I think, you know, going back to that sports analogy, they don't get paid to perform. It's important. Mm -hmm. Yep. They get paid to practice. Mm -hmm. They get paid to work out. They get paid gotcha. to eat well. They get paid to not go clubbing, yep. not smoke on the weekends. Right. Like there's a lot of things that are involved. We just get to see it. Mm. on game day dude that's so good man steve i i, I could listen to you all day long and it, it'd be fun as heck to like 
you know, be a fly in the wall on, on a negotiation or two, but how, how does your program work? I, I'm not selling it on this call, but I know that there's people who are going to go cool. These, these free resources, they're going to take them and run with them. And, yeah. I, and I know you guys are going to be able to increase your close ratio like next week by a- asking some of these questions. Cause you guys might have literally one problem where you're going, Oh shoot, I've been presenting all of my stuff all in one sheet right after we did it. Da, da, and it's only getting X amount of close ratio. I'm going to take this one strategy from Steve and that could change it. And then you, you nail that. And then you take another strategy and practice mm-hmm. that for a month. But what, what do you do in your program? And if people wanted to plug in and, and, uh, and, and get better or plug your team into it, how's it work? Yeah. So we have two different tiers. So we have our course, uh, which is 12 modules, uh, where someone can purchase that as 2k, but mm-hmm. with that, I guarantee you, right. You're going to make 10k like two weeks after you get that course. Right? Yep. Guarantee that. Uh, so that's everything that we talk about uh, here over 12 modules. Cool. Um, and then we have a, a mentorship. We'll work with someone uh, every week, them and their team every week for a year. Ah, I got you. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where you really dive deep into this because you'll learn something and, and you'll apply it. And it's like, no, it didn't work. And so, okay, we'll t- talk about it. Let's, mm-hmm. What did they say? How did you respond? What did they, how did they, say, how did they respond to that? Okay. And we'll break it down and say, okay, well, here's where you might've been able to do, do a little differently. Mm-hmm. And I'll also hold their feet to the fire. You know, I'm going to ask them like, cause that script that I gave you, we also give it to all of our students gotcha. and say, okay, well, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you establish the rules? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you didn't establish the rules. Why not? Okay. Maybe you don't understand enough. Let's role play that. Mm-hmm. But I want them by the end of the year to be as good as me. And I think mm-hmm. it's possible if yeah. someone's committed to doing it for a year. Dude. So here, here's one thing I want, I want to tell people to kind of, you know, almost, almost in closing is this is uh, I've got a team here at carrot and I don't know what you, what everyone you're know, listening to the carrot cast, what your team situation is. If it's, if it's just you amazing dive into this, get the coaching coaching. Coaching is key because um, you can read this stuff and it's gonna be very valuable and you're going to get X percent of that knowledge from that. But there's so many things that we're blind to that we just don't pick up. You know, we, we don't pick it up because we haven't seen been there, done that. You know, if, if I'm out there golfing, as an example, I'm a very amateur golfer, but I like it. I spent uh, three days at Van and Dunes a couple of weeks ago. It was amazing. Got four rounds up, in up there. And I'm sitting there uh, swinging for years, man. I've been trying to do, you know, watching some videos and doing some stuff. And I keep on like adjusting my grip over and over and I'm like, I can't find it. And then I'll hit a couple of balls that are straight. I nailed that, but then it's not consistent. And I was out golfing with a buddy of mine. He, he's on the sales team, actually, uh, here at Carrot. And he's a really good golfer, like almost scratch golfer. And he just watched me do a couple of things. And we we're out at Bannon Dudes in October. And he's like, hey, do you mind if I just kind of show you something real quick that I, that I saw? And I go, yeah. And uh, and he goes, yeah, just like take this and do that with it instead of that with it. It was this tiniest little tweak, dude, like the tiniest ever. And he goes, just try that and see if that works. Dude, I did it. It, it, it made my game so much more consistent, like not, yeah. not just a little so much more consistent and it never right. would have happened if I didn't have a person who's really good at that thing, see what I couldn't see, even though I was watching a million videos mm-hmm. and then say, just adjust it a little bit. And it changed my game. And that's, that's the same thing that happens here. Do you, uh, you know, Gary Harper? Yeah. Yeah. I know Gary. Well, yep, man, he came out here to my, to my office and we did a, a, a sit down where he took my business apart. Yep. And I can tell you, and I said this to him too, cause I think he's an amazing coach. I look up to him a lot. Mm-hmm. I said this to him. Gary, there's nothing you taught me today that I've never learned before. Yep. But the blind spots you revealed in my business, holy <laughs> crap, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I can teach this stuff, but we are terrible students. We are yeah, terrible yeah. students of our own. Yep. Right. And so like the, the, his, his surgical precision, I mean, my business is 180 degrees in the last six months mm. because he was in my office. And that oh. goes back to what you're talking about is that the unconscious incompetence, the, the blind spots, you don't know what you're missing. Yep. until someone else with uh, an impartial eye can point it out. Yep. And, and the thing I always like to say is how many, for Carrot, how many leads and deals you're okay with losing this year from underperformance on your website? But now same thing here, how many deals are you okay with losing this year? And what is your average profit per deal because of a uh, bad sales technique? And so yeah. what I want you guys to do is go check out carrot.com forward slash close, invest your time in there first. And we've got just the, all three, three, four of those guys are amazing in there. Invest your time into all of them. And what I want to encourage all of you guys to do is if you have a business 
business with good leads coming in right now, make an investment in your, in your education, make an investment in diving into it. And, uh, uh, just take, take a pick of the, the, the person you resonate the most with, or all of them. You know, I have so many marketing courses. Like I don't just go buy one marketing course. I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to get the one I, I buy them all. And I'm going to pick out some things from it. So, uh, Steve, I appreciate you big time, man. Uh, where can people follow you, find you, uh, uh after this? Uh, yeah, the best place is Instagram at steve.trang. Uh, otherwise, uh, we got our podcast, Real Estate Disruptors, on iTunes and YouTube. Or lastly, just disruptors.com. Dude, you've been picking up your Instagram game. I, I saw I saw you uh, You got a little bit of training you're coaching from uh, from Mr. King. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, and Panita, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, it. They'll, they'll, they, I mean, that's the, that's the coolest thing. You know, you just surround yourself by people surround yourself with people that kick in your butt and yep. those guys are kick, kicking my butt on social media. So mm-hmm. I'm in a group text with them. I'm the, I'm the weakest guy in that group. <laughs> and I spent a lot of time there on purpose by design yep. to get better. I got, like I said, I want to be world-class in multiple things. I want to be world-class in social media too. I like it. I like it. Well, Steve, man, I appreciate you big time, man. Have an amazing, amazing rest of the week. And y'all go to carrot.com forward slash close, follow Steve online, go to Instagram, follow Steve Trang and look up real estate disruptors podcast. So Steve, have an awesome week. Appreciate you big time and guys go and execute. Don't take this. I heard a, heard a Tony Robbins quote this morning. Um, you know, I probably heard it a million times, but it hit me uh, pretty hard this morning. It's like, uh, information uh, knowledge is not power. Okay. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is, um, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to mess up. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is uh, potential power. Applied mm-hmm. knowledge is power. So I want you guys yep. to take this and apply it in your businesses, change your business, change your life. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Carrot Community. Thank you. Thank you.